Well, you're not going to find a seahorse on the beach. You'd have to dive or snorkel and find them deep in the ocean, either in a coral reef or a rock bed. Seahorses are pretty neat. We're just going to look at pictures and learn a little bit about seahorses before we get started to help our project. These fish are about the size of a hand, really small, and they aren't great at swimming long distances. They use their tail and their two fins to grab onto coral or nearby objects and help them swim around. They're also pretty similar to a chameleon. They can change color to look like their background so that they can hide from predators and so they're not as easily seen when they're trying to eat. I would encourage you to think of other objects you can add into your background, either looking at these examples or searching for yourself different paintings of seahorses. Remember, you can pause the video at any time. Here are your supplies you'll need for this project. Before we get started, I would look up some drawings or clip art of seahorses. Get familiar with the shapes. I like to make a little quick sketch before I get started, and then we'll start our painting. After I've practiced, I'm going to start with my circle for my seahorse head, making sure that it's pretty large towards the top of my paper, and I want to make sure that my painting looks interesting. So first, I want to start with a really large head. It's okay if I run out of room for the body. Next, I'm going to be drawing a half circle. I want this half circle to be about half the size of the original circle that I drew. So I'm using my fingers to measure and make marks about how big it needs to be. This is where the eye will live. Next, I need to draw the snout. The snout is not really a perfect rectangle, but I'm going to use a rectangle for now. If you ran out of space, now's a good time to pause the video, erase, and try and start again. I want to make sure that the snout is about the same size as those two shapes I've already drawn. So it's going to be pretty close to the edge of my paper, and that's okay. For the eye, I'm going to be drawing three circles. One small circle surrounded by two larger circles. Remember, it's okay if they're not perfect. This is just our sketch. Next, I need to draw the spine. I want to know about how long I need to make the spine before I start. I want to make this spine about two heads long. So I'm holding my finger at the bottom where I need to go, and then my spine is connected to the back of the head. Now I need to draw a circle for the belly. It's going to be about the same size as the head. Did you know that the male seahorse is actually who carries the babies? Pretty cool. For the neck, I want to make sure it's a little skinny and then it's coming out where the belly is. It'll make sort of an S shape. Now just connect your lines to the bottom edge of your paper. It's okay if we ran out of room for the tail. For the dorsal fin on the back of our seahorse, make two diagonal lines about the same height. Then with your pencil, lightly draw U shapes until you connect both of the lines. This might be where you look at a picture if you need to see more how the rectangle shapes are placed onto our seahorse, or you can just be like me and sort of guess and decide what you think looks best. I'm making some rectangle shapes different sizes with one tallest towards the back of his head. Seahorses also have a fin on the side of their head. Make a C shape, two diagonal lines, and then close it with another larger C shape. I'm going to draw a few wavy lines, one behind his eye, and then another along the spine so it's not looking so smooth. This can go right on top of the line or coming off out from the line. 
making sure these are all a little bit different. For this art project, we are focusing on the executive functioning skill of working memory. Think back to when we were looking at our pictures of the seahorse. Their snout wasn't a perfect rectangle. What shapes did you really see? Start changing your seahorse snout to look a little more realistic to what a seahorse would really look like. Now I'm going to be making small rectangles all along the spine. You can make these larger or smaller. Just making sure you're leaving space in front because I'm going to be making a few rows of rectangles. Once I've gone all the way down the spine, then I can make larger rectangles down the center of his body. I'm leaving a little space where the belly is so I can make another series of rectangles where the belly is and those will be painted a little bit lighter. using a yellow tempera paint so you can see right through it and I can see my pencil. This is what I want. If you have a yellow paint, maybe an acrylic, that's really thick and you can't see through it, try adding a little bit of water to it. Using a little bit of orange and a little bit of yellow, I'm going to be outlining my shapes and also around my eye. Using a bigger brush is sort of hard to do, so it might be a good idea to switch to your smaller brush for your outlines. Using the same yellow orange, I am going to be painting in a few shapes, the fin and also the rectangles along his body. Using white and yellow, I am going to paint where his snout is and anywhere else that I'd like to have light yellow. This might be around his eye, along where his snout is, and maybe even his belly. I'm thinking of areas that catch light. I am going to carefully add a second layer of yellow around all the shapes that I've already done with my yellow-orange. This is just to make sure that it doesn't look super see-through. Use yellow and white to paint the inner circle. Then take red and orange to mix a darker color for the outer circle. I'm also going to use red orange to outline things like the fins and make lines within the fin and anywhere else that you might want to add some darker areas, maybe underneath his neck, anywhere that maybe on your reference photo or a picture of your seahorse looks a little darker. Now we're ready for our large brush to fill our background. Use your large brush and light blue or make any color you'd like for your background and paint an outline around your seahorse. I'm painting an outline first before I just start painting the background. Now you want to use vertical strokes for your background. This should look nice and smooth and make sure you're really careful around your seahorse. I want to make a turquoise, but remember you can always make whatever color you'd like for your background. 
Using the dry brush technique, so I don't have a lot of paint on my brush, I am going to use tiny bits of paint and make sure I can see the brush strokes on the background. It should look similar to this. You can paint your background any color. Just be careful you're not mixing more than three colors and you're keeping them close on the color wheel. Using your small brush, paint little dots or rectangles or any shape you'd like on the face and also on the body. These will just be spots of color, so have fun with it. The background is up to you, so if you'd like to add plants, you can mix green, yellow, and white so it shows up bright on your background, but again, this is all up to you. I'm going to paint a few wavy lines for some seaweed and kelp, but you can make any background you'd like. Remember, you can mix any color you'd like for your spots on your seahorse. I'm going to make a teal, but you can make whatever you'd like. Then once I have my color, I'm going to paint on top of my white spots. It's okay if a little bit of white still shows through. Using the back of your brush, you are going to make a black dot for the eye. I like to practice on my plate first before I start. Then one dot for where the eye needs to be at the center of those circles. Thank you for watching and don't forget to share what you created.